And you are just getting started. We all have made what mistakes. This is how you learn. This is how you learn. But if you get rid of a person too fast, they're not the jewel what they're going to be. They're going to be a jewel. They're going to be that which is pleasing to you. But you got to learn to be patient. He might not have the job, sugar, that's bringing the money that you want him to bring in. But at least he's working. I thought I had two right there. He's working, isn't he? Give him a chance. Give him a chance. And so he might not, amen, have what we need right now. So what we have to do is turn off the air conditioning and ask the windows to keep from paying a high gas bill or a light bill. We got to adjust some things. He might start sweeping the floor at McDonald's for five years from now. He might be the owner. Be patient. That's one thing God wants us to do. Be patient with each other. Your teaching, it takes time. Especially the growing children. You're going to have to say it over and over again. The same thing in the church. There are some things that you're going to have to do and say it over and over again until they get there. Everybody all right? All right. Losing your patience sometimes causes you trouble. And so he said, be ye angry and sin not. That's why he tells the fathers about the children. Don't promote them to wrath. Be patient with them. You ought to have done this by now. You ought to be old enough to do it. Wait. You got some 30 year old that's not there yet. Oh, that ain't good. Some people that be 90 years old and haven't gotten there yet. Y'all are smiling at me. Should have. But you have to deal with a person where they are. And so, feeling as if your opinion, whatever I say, you knock it down. Oh, but Daddy, you don't understand. Well, he got to be patient with you. Because she hasn't gotten there yet. So he tells the parent, Especially the man, don't amen, continue to parent, comparing them children with one another. She's gotten there, but she hasn't. You older than she is, but be patient. You got to keep working with this one. The other one got it just like that. That doesn't mean you stop working with them. Can I get a witness there? Your opinion, you feel as though whatever I say, whatever I bring to the table is not appreciated. Injustice. <laughs> Other causes of anger include memory of traumatic events and worrying about personal problems. How many worry in the house? Just go and tell the truth, you're a Christian, and you've been for the word of God a long time. He will supply my every need, but you will. I hear you quote, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, but you scared to death. <laughs> you word <it> all up. <laughs> Got to get out that Walmart, she was all oh, the tissue gone. <laughs> but we're quoting the scripture, the Lord will supply my every need according to his riches and his glory. Now, there are some things that trigger anger. First of all, hurt. 
Anybody here been hurt? Been hurt because I gave you all, especially in marriages and, amen, in courtship, especially in the church sometimes. Anybody ever been church hurt? And I hear that that's one of the worst. When you give it all, your opinion, you give it all of your talent, and you're being rejected, you're not part of the crowd. You've been sealed out because you don't wear what somebody else wears. Or your hair is not where they want it to be. Or your color is not where it wanted to be. So you've been what, abandoned. You've been kept out of the in crowd. But in the church, it should not be that. It shouldn't be to the point to where there are clubs and amen. There are people that have been singled out better and thinking that they're more than the rest. But he said, we are members one of another. That means you are in the crowd. That means that you are part of. But when people, amen, of the upper have been here a long time, that's when you get a lot of trouble. They won't train nobody else. Thank you. And they're keeping you out. I'm not saying that we do that here, but I'm saying to us, you get hurt for when you, when you want to become a part of something. And people won't allow you in. Right. So let me ask by the way of a hand, anybody ever been church hurt? Amen. Sometimes that calls anger. You've been rejected. Second. You've been rejected. That causes anger. So these are levels. Amen. These are steps. You haven't gotten to anger yet. But you confused, you humiliated. People talk to you wrong. Anybody ever been taught wrong in church? Amen. People talk to you like you're nobody. Amen. You don't measure up, you don't come up to it. And so therefore, amen, these are steps. You get hurt, you get rejected, and you've been humiliated, and you become confused. I thought the church supposed to treat people different. When I was in the world, we did share bottles of life. When I was in the world, they thought I'd get me an MD 2020. Everybody put in. You put a dollar in, I put a dollar in. And I make sure you don't drink it all. Hey. In the world, we, 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 we shared, amen, we shared our joints. Anybody here know what a joint is? You shotgun me, I shotgun you, amen. We passed the blunt, amen. I ain't never did that, I'm just saying what I saw. <laughs> This is anger. 
this brings anger. Wrath and climber, all of these are cousins. And it's rough when you go mess with people cubs. And so verse 30 tells us, grieve not. All of this hurt God because his children can't get along. And haven't you seen people in the church, they want to be a part of the church, but when they come in, they got a guard up. Look like the man. Come in with the arms all wild, wild. I dare somebody. <laughs> and so he tells us in 29, edify one another. Instead of putting each other down, we can do what? Edify. We need to lift each other. People need the church to put their arms around and to show love towards each other. But all of these are steps, hurt, next step, rejection, next step, amen, humiliated, next step, frustration, next step, you're scared to even come to church. And now you've gotten tired of it, and I dare anybody to say something to me because I'm angry. Now, I haven't been accepted, I've been rejected, and the Lord says in verse 26, be ye angry, there are some things that ought to be angry. Don't let nobody come in your house and take over. Amen. Amen. Oh, you're right. That's your home, personal, your business, your church. You got outsiders that come in and try to take it. There are some things you want to stand up for. And if that makes you angry, well, then you need to get angry. Amen. Because this is what we worship. This is what we serve God. And all of that that Paul was talking about, we don't want it to be a part of the church. This is where officers, this is where, amen, leaders come in. That when we see those things that are flaring up, we ought to pour water on it. Get it out. And he said, don't let the sun. Is that in verse 6, 26? Be ye angry. I can understand about getting angry over some things that need to be done. Because you've been promising to do that and it haven't been done. What is it? This is house of God. God's house ought to be the best. And he said, be angry and sin not. Don't allow it to pull you to where they are. Right. Even though they're talking, even though they're scandalized, even though you've been rejected, even though you're frustrated, don't allow that to cause you to get out of character. Right. Because he said, blessed are the peace. Makers. I'm not talking about a piece. <laughs> That's how the parents stuff, you know. Peace. He said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. And so if there's a problem, he said, now let us come together. Let's sit out at the table. You don't need to raise your voice. I'm not going to raise now. Let's sit down. Come here, baby. Come here for a moment. Why, why are you walking around here mad? What's the matter? Right. Amen. We're at the same table. We're eating at the same house. Amen. We're sleeping, amen, in the same place here. What's wrong? Well, I, I feel I've been rejected. Out of all that I do, you don't appreciate me. Now it is time to correct it. Sugar, I didn't mean no harm. I had my mind some other place. And if I spoke to you wrong, I'm sorry. How many know that I cut the ground? 
I'm sorry. You can be dead wrong. Never be so proud to. To the point that where you can't say, I'm sorry. Amen. I'm sorry for how I treated you. And if anybody ought to show tenderheartedness, it's judge. Can I say it like that? Judge. Those that are saved, those that are coming to the house of God, ought to be the first one to say, listen, I'm sorry for the way I talk. I'm sorry for the way I act. But we all got to live in here together. And the way you carry yourself is an offense to me. Now, let's get this straight. Am I right about it? He said, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath because it's going to build. You're mad today. And tomorrow you ain't speaking. You ain't got a straight last night. And if she put her leg on you, you kick it off. All right. All right. Don't you touch me. <laughs> All right. Y'all get mine as quiet on me. All right. He said, be angry. There was some things, no, I'm not going to do this until we get it what? straight. Let's get this straight. <coughs> because tomorrow, It's not promised to me. And I want to make sure that I'm straight. Listen to it for just a moment. There are some people that have laid down together and never spoken again. What if we die in the sleep? There are some people that have left home and gone to work and never to return. I saw the man the other day, 50 days in quarantine, when he got out there and played in it. Amen. Don't you know that's a long time to be without someone that you love? You can't even touch. You can't even talk to. Have you thought about losing that person that you've been so involved with all of these years? And so if you would die during the process of maybe the children going to school and they never coming back home. Mm -hmm. Never thought of that? The young man just looked your jock. Mm -hmm. They never came back home. The wife going to work and you never talking to her again. Mm -hmm. Or the husband going out and you never talk to him again. That's why he said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. He said, make it straight. Get it straight. Get it straight. There's nothing no better than they to wake up and say good morning. Amen. How are you? Nothing any better than come, amen, from working all evening. And you see a beautiful smile. Somebody waiting at the door for you. It's been eight hours. How you doing? Somebody talking nice to you. How was your day, sugar? I'm doing fine. How was your day? I miss you. I went to the store today and I bought you something. All right. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> now let's compare that. Somebody being nice. Oh, Lord, here she come again. I thought she was gonna work overtime. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's not promise. It's not promise that we'll see each other again. There's an area that the church ought to work on, and that's an area of being angry with one another. Release. Release it. Release it. Let it go. What they said was five days ago. What they said and what they did was ten days ago. What they said and did was ten years ago. And 
He'll not do it. Man, he was a new man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 